A little over a month ago, I decided to take on a 30-day challenge where I only used one pen, one ink, and one journal for all my paper needs. Also, during that 30 days, I could not purchase any pen, ink, or paper, and if anything arrived at my house through the mail that I had ordered earlier, I couldn't open and use it. So I'd like to tell you about how the 30 days went and at the end tell you about lessons learned and they were surprising. They were not what I thought they would be. For my one pen, I decided on the Mont Blanc 146 when I was making the video, mainly because it was a gusher and I felt like I was going to miss ink. I didn't want to do the Custom 92 because I didn't want to stick with the fine nib, nor 1.1 and the Twisby. And then I changed my mind. <laughs> I decided that the Mont Blanc was not as attainable as a Custom 74 and decided to go with that instead. I prepared for this by clearing off my desk and putting all the items that I did not want to use over on a separate table. And here you can see it all kind of lined up right there. The Custom 74 has a gold nib and in the States it's around $160 and you can get them for under $100 here in Japan. This one has a soft, fine, medium nib, and I thought that was a nice nib size to kind of represent more people. And the soft is more or less a bounce, not so much a flex. If pressed, you can flex with it, but you need to be very conscious about really using a light hand on the upstroke, and then of course, pressing harder on the downstroke. It doesn't have a really good snap back, but you can flex a couple of words with it just fine. One of the things that I noticed about the Custom 74 is that it's very, very smooth. And I was used to just the slight feedback from the Sailor pens I've been using a lot lately. Very smooth nibs allow you to write really fast, but you have a little bit less control. But using this pen for a month, I ended up getting a little trick I used to help with my writing. Here I've written fast because you can do it with a smooth nib, but your thumb can kind of pull your nib to the side. And I found this is very exaggerated, but I found that if you cock it off to the side that your thumb is on, you can write a little more neatly because you have a little bit of drag on the pen. I fell back in love with the ink that I use, Pilot Blue Black. It's a useful ink in that it's partially um, waterproof so that when I use it for an address on letters, it might smear a bit, but I knew the address was going to stay on there. It's a very smooth ink and it's not super saturated or super dark so the shading was real nice on it. And for those of you that are super conscientious about price per milliliter of ink, this is probably one of your best deals you can get out there. I got this for around $11 here in Japan for 350 milliliters, but you can get it I think for around $25 um, in the States. One of the nice things about carrying multiple pens is that you don't tend to run out of ink. But since I was only using this one bottle, I had to refill it quite often and I was sometimes afraid of leaving the house without having a full converter. So I got really good at just filling that converter up and I found that once you've just filled it up like normal so that your feed is saturated, the best way to fill the ink up tippy top with a least amount of mess is to just syringe it right directly into the converter. That way you can fill it all the way up without having to do multiple, drain it, suck it back in, drain it. And also it really minimized the amount of bubbles you had in there. So I'd get a really full fill. But I was still worried about running out of ink when I was away from home. So I ended up, since this bottle is so small, I ended up putting it into a plastic bag and then just carrying it around in my purse. A couple of people predicted by using just one ink that I would end up missing color. But I think I was into this so deep, I really didn't. What I did miss when I was reviewing some notes is kind of haloing ink because it's interesting. And here you can see there's a little bit of a halo around this pink ink. And I also missed and really appreciated the look of a very fine nib with a very saturated ink like in here. And as for paper, I limited myself to this Endless Recorder Journal. It's an A5 size with a dot grid on 
68 GSM Tomoa River paper, and this is the old paper. For those of you that watched my paper testing video a couple weeks back, I had actually gotten a bad batch of the new Tomoa River. I've tried this new Tomoa River that's uh, for sale here in Japan now, and it's, it's fine. It's just a little bit different than the old stuff. I didn't allow myself to use any other kind of paper, and right here you can see I'm showing where I had to cut paper out in order to write letters or whatever. I believe this part was a little bit too strict. Right now what you're seeing is all the notebooks that I basically had to replace with that one notebook. And part of that problem was I was always having to flip around in my own notebook to see what I wrote last about the different topic. Like for instance, I study minerals and then also I'm learning how to use Final Cut Pro. And those are two separate notes and that made it difficult. And here I'm calculating the number of pages I used. It looked like 142 in the 30 days. So when I needed extra pieces of paper, like to write a letter, or like even here I'm studying Final Cut Pro and I wanted to write some commands down on a little template, I had to cut it out and then use that. And even like a grocery list, I had to like cut out a piece of paper, fold it up and put my grocery list on it. I think that's a bit extreme and a little bit onerous. I think I envisioned a kind of like one man, one notebook all alone or some sort of macho thing like that. And actually it was just a pain. And I think if someone else is going to do the challenge, it might just be wise to do one pen, one ink, or maybe allow yourself to use several notebooks or something. I think many of us use different journals or different notebooks for different reasons and this just made it a little more complicated than it needed to be. Here I am making my first entry when I started the actual 30 days. And I know many of you are thinking, well, did you mess up? Yes, yes I did. I had filmed and used the pens I needed to film with before I started my 30 days. So all I had left to do to publish videos while I was on my 30 day challenge was just to edit them. However, I forgot to get some nib shots for my video about the Atelier Lusso dragon pen with the Mark Backus Predator nib. So I pulled it out and videotaped it. And like an idiot, instead of capping it and putting it on the separate desk, I just laid it down and didn't think about it. And as I said earlier, I am learning how to use Final Cut Pro and the audio system is different and I had to mark down what my new audio settings were going to be. And I wanted to write, put the mic buttons straight up and down. I grabbed a pen, uncapped it, and then started to write, mic straight. And then I realized I had written with the Predator nib and it was like in a lightning bolt went up my arm. I mean, you could tell right away. I got the word Mike written out in STR and then I stopped. <laughs> you can see on the top line, I got the word Mike, M-I-C written out and then STR <laughs> and then I stopped. It's in a thinner line. The next line is in my custom 74 where it says Mike straight up and down. So what did I do? Well, after a few choice, very bad words, I just capped the pen, put it away, and continued on. I made a mistake. When I posted my last video, I had a lot of people that wanted to try this 30-day thing, but I ended up getting two people that actually gave me some really good feedback and explained to me how they did their 30-day challenge. My rules were for me. I mean, if you decide you want to do a 30-day cha challenge of some sort, you know, you can kind of make up your own rules. I included the no buy thing and that ended up scaring the most people. People weren't too worried about using one pen and one ink. They just didn't want to be able to not buy new pens or paper or ink during that 30-day challenge. The first is Aiden Bernal. He's a YouTuber and he chose to do it for one week. He used a Parker Vacumatic Shadow Wave, which I thought was interesting. He used a vintage pen and used Parker Quink Blue Black. 
and you really need to check out his video I'll post it down below but it was interesting in that you know he's a student so of course he's got different notebooks for different things and yeah, I think he made a wise choice in just sticking with one pen and one ink and not worrying about it you do need to check out his video because he does math and pen and someone doing math with a Parker Vacuumatic is it's a pretty big flex he did say he missed his other pens and he enjoyed the experience but in the end he also enjoys the experience of writing with a variety of tools to make that writing experience a more broad one the next is Peter from Peter Hoff 3 on Instagram and he ended up using an OMOS I didn't get the model with one ink and he did it for three weeks he also limited himself to a field notes notebook and he ended it three weeks because he just ran out of paper on the field notes notebook he ended up refilling his pen four times what he got out of this experiment is that field notes are not very fountain pen friendly and that he knows that now he can get by with one pen just like he did before he said he fell into the rabbit hole of collecting pens. He broke his three week pen fast with a Santini Italia Nanagon and it was a birthday present I think and he had waited two weeks to be able to use it. So happy birthday Peter and thanks for the info. So what did I get out of my 30 day challenge? It was interesting. It was vaguely pen related, but bigger. Going deep is sometimes easier. And what I mean by that is I was pretty committed. I was all in and I didn't need to make any kind of decisions on what I was going to do. But when I started this, I got bombarded by messages with people that were wanting to try this 30 day challenge, but they were like, can I just use two pens or can I buy pens, but not, you know, use them or can I use the pens, but not, not buy them. And they just made it so complicated and it, it ended up being, I think, harder for them. And definitely the hardest part for most people was not buying pens, paper or ink or not using products that showed up at their house that they had to wait to use. I made little jokey comments on social media about how I wanted to get things like when the Moon Man Q1 came out, I really wanted one. But in the end, it really wasn't that hard, even though I looked at sales and looked at social media. It was just the, I just knew there was no decision and that made it easier. So in honor of this, I'll be showing clips of things that showed up in my house and I waited to use as I talk about the other two lessons learned. The next is habits will make or break you. I think many of you have developed the same habit as I have in that you kind of quickly pick up a pen, uncap and use it. You don't really think about it. And I've developed that habit on purpose. I really want to make sure that I use fountain pens as much as possible. And even though I knew that was going to be a problem, I had put things away so they were not within reach, I, by habit, picked up a pen and used it when I didn't mean to. And the corollary to that habits will make or break you is lower your barriers to entry if you're trying to develop a habit. Let me explain. Here on my computer, there is a volume thing. It's a design mistake I think Apple made. In order to control your volume, you have to first press the volume button and then it shows you the volume controller. And then you have to either lower your volume or increase your volume. So it's two steps. And you're thinking, oh, it's just two little clicks. It's no big deal. But if you're trying to listen to someone on a YouTube video, say, and they're speaking softly, so you turn the volume up and then all of a sudden the commercial comes on and blows your ears off, those two steps are a pain. And you're over there trying to mash buttons to get that volume to go back down. As a result, I use headphones now when I use my computer. And if I need to quickly adjust the volume, I just hit the bottom or the top and the volume's already there. So even something as small as just an extra click 
is a barrier to entry. It, it's one more hurdle you have to cross to get something done. So if you want to develop a habit like using your fountain pens more, then you want to lower all your barriers to entry. And so what I do is I have a fountain pen in my purse. I have one next to my computer. I have one in the kitchen because you always seem to want to make little notes or whatever in the kitchen. And then I have, of course, a bunch around on my desk. I've lowered my barriers to entry. And as a result, using a fountain pen is very natural and a very ingrained habit for me. It just turns out that the habit was so strong that it ended up hurting me on this challenge. And this one is a doozy. Fountain pens help with deep work. Let's talk about deep work. My daughter took a couple of computer classes from Cal Newport, so I decided to read his books. This one is called Deep Work, Rules for Focused Success in a Distracted World. One of his premises is that deep work is the actual work in which you create things, solve complex problems, or develop rare and valuable skills. Deep work is not busyness, it's not busy work. Busy work or shallow work is a result of being distracted, which he claims that many of us, or maybe most of us, are that way now in the modern world. One of the results of reading this book is I, about once a week, go on a 24-hour social media fast where I don't go on any social media site for a whole day. And I also spend most of the day with my phone in airplane mode. My family complains about never being able to get a hold of me, but I spent most of my life without a cell phone, so yeah. Now here's the weird part. If you take a look at my journal, my first entry when I started the 30-day challenge was 17 May. And then the very next day, 18 May, I wrote a very short entry with just the names of the people that wanted to do the 30-day challenge. And then if you look, the next entry is 24 May, a whole week later. In one week, I wrote less than a half a page. In one week, I had only written several lines with my fountain pen. And the reason was, is because I was worried about picking up and using the wrong pen. So all my pens were put away and my barriers to entry were very high. So I ended up using my computer all the time. I couldn't use my Hobonichi, so I did all my scheduling on my phone. And any kind of notes or study material, I just read them off the computer. And so I was on the computer all the time. And guess what happens when you're on the computer all the time or on your phone all the time? It's very easy to check your messages. It's very easy to check your social media. And you start getting fragmented work done. You're kind of scattered all over the place. You're doing about eight different things at the same time. And you're always checking, checking. And that just annoyed the heck out of me. Everything I was doing was shallow work. So I made a conscientious effort to start picking up my fountain pen and carrying my fountain pen in my notebook all the time. It was on me all the time. In the bathroom, in the kitchen, everywhere I went. And my deep work skyrocketed. I came up with a jillion different ideas for videos. I finally got off my butt and completely learned Final Cut Pro. And I even wrote part of a short story. What's up with that? When I would sit down and work on something, I usually ended up using a full converter of ink in one sitting. And it was like the whole universe was talking to me. I like watching Peter McKinnon. He's kind of the darling of the filmography world. He does all this cool stuff like drink cool coffee and does photography and travels and has tattoos and does magic. And to my surprise, a couple days ago, he came out with a video where he felt like writing with, I think it was like a ballpoint pen on a journal, eight things every day that he needed to get done, totally rearranged his priorities and helped him get things done. I know it wasn't a fountain pen, but it was analog. He had to write them down in a notebook, and he said it changed his life. And he also mentioned the distractions that he had 
when he was using the computer or whatever and not actually writing in his notebook. I'll leave the link to the video in the description box. So I felt concerted effort to use my fountain pen help me do more deep work. Now am I going to get rid of all my pens and just use one pen forever and be a true minimalist? Yeah, that's not going to happen. But I look at these like happy sticks. These are sticks of happiness. And when I write with a fountain pen, I get a variety of different writing experiences, you know, different size nibs. And then just looking at these kind of colorful pens kind of make me happy and encourage me to use my fountain pens. So yeah, I'm not getting rid of these anytime soon. But I felt like I accomplished my goal of getting back down to basics with a fountain pen. Yeah, different size nibs and different kinds of ink and that's all fun. I really enjoy those. But if I had to spend the rest of my life with that one pen, that one ink, and that kind of journal, if the alternative was that I couldn't use a fountain pen, yeah, I would do that. Because having a fountain pen really is something that is useful and a basic necessity in my life. 